Okay, this part, I'm gonna do my best to summarize what I did to troubleshoot a problem I was having with my transmission. I'm gonna splice in and show you what the problem was that I was having right now. All right, got something new that popped up here. It's uh, been real wet and rainy. I drove it out in the rain yesterday. I got a couple drips in the cab. Uh, went to go leave with the truck and all of a sudden it changed to gear number two and got stuck, it wouldn't respond. It's responding now after restarting the truck a second time. Let's see if it does it. Yep. And then it's being locked and it won't respond at all. As far as the gear change goes. And then what I need to do, shut the truck off. We'll put it in drive. Now, it's giving me that blink again. I'm not really sure what that means. Is it not actually going into drive? Yeah, it's not, it's in neutral. It's like the transmission's not shifting. Never, great, I hope I'm not dead in the water stuck right in my driveway now. Neutral. All right, so it went in. I'm assuming it's because it's wet, but regardless, it's something I'm gonna have to figure out. So, my first thought um, that I did not mention in that video clip was that the speedometer also wasn't working. So I figured there was some sort of speed sensor, and I was right and wrong, and you're gonna see as I troubleshoot through this. Uh, the reason why I'm going to try to summarize it as much as I can up front first is I spent about three days troubleshooting this. I have all kinds of recordings all over the place. I thought I found the problem. I didn't find the problem and so on. So I'm going to sort of splice in and out with the problems that I found or did not find as I was troubleshooting while going over in general what you should do if you are having problems like this as general checks so you're not unnecessarily buying sensors and stuff like that. And what I'm gonna start with is showing you the information on what you should get out of the technical manuals. Here's what I used, uh, this probably being the most important thing is a multimeter. Uh, I have some extension cables, different things that I can use, with different wires and stuff on there. Flashlight, I had a little magnet dish for putting different pieces of hardware in, pliers, screwdriver, for the grill, uh, 3 8 uh, This is a little Torx T10 for taking apart the controller. Little screwdriver with seven millimeter attached. You might want a small socket. Some uh, cutters for trimming zip ties and you'll need some zip ties to replace them. So in the technical manuals, if you didn't know on these trucks, there's about, I think seven PDF files with different levels you have like your Operator's manual, your unit level maintenance, and then your depot level maintenance. You end up needing to skip all around in no particular order to find what you need. So the very first thing that you need to figure out is what type of transmission controller you have, because that's gonna make diagnosing codes and possibly your wire harness is different. There's WTEC 2 and WTEC 3. I have a WTEC 3 on mine. So we're gonna go over that but a lot of the information for WTEC2, as far as codes go, is the same. The wire harnesses are different. The information in the technical menus could be found in about the same place, because usually the WTEC2 information is above the WTEC3 information. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is pull the codes, if there are any, off of your controller. What complicated mine with this is my up button was not working. And you have to press the up and down button in order to access the diagnostic codes. So I'm gonna splice in really quick what I had to do to get my up arrow to work now. All right, so what I'm gonna try to do next is pull the codes out of here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this right, so bear with me. But I know I've tried to use my upshift and downshift manually and I was never able to upshift. So it's possible this button is no good on my controller and it's not gonna work, but mode. 
Yeah, see, it's not going to work, so I'm not going to be able to pull codes out. Maybe if I don't hit mode. So that sucks. All right, I'm going to, since I got this apart, I'm going to take the controller off. And I think this faceplate can come off when you got it on the bench and see if something's actually bad inside. Uh, it's a 3 8 wrench. Can you see the bolts? There's there's two bolts that are like pinching it on. Mm, yes. Just take those off and it will come out. Just come out. Okay, so as I was taking it apart, there's little brass fittings pressed into the plastic, like little riv nuts. This whole one just kind of broke free. Possible water got in there from that. We'll see. It opens up. All right, got it all open and there's nothing obvious. It doesn't even really look like it's that moist in here. I was hoping I'd be able to pull this off, but these seems like they're sort of like a rivet type thing. I was hoping I'd be able to open it and see if I could figure out why this button wasn't making contact and maybe fix it, but it doesn't look like that's happening. I don't know, I'm going to put it back together and uh, do a little digging in the TMs and stuff. Before I put it together, I just beat this with the back of the Torx driver. Now that I got my up and down arrow working, you're basically TM number three on the unit level maintenance. Section eight is about transmission. I have the part pulled up here, printed out. 8-TAC-5, which is the code reading and code clearing procedures. I printed out only this one page because it had the two codes that I had pulling out of mine. So after I got the up and down arrow to work, I pulled the codes off of it and I'm going to splice that in now. And then you hit mode. That's my second code, D2, and then it flashes 2511, and then again, D3, no code, D3, no code, D4, no code, and there's, there's not going to be any more codes, and this is how you cycle through. So... I don't really know how to get out of the mode, but I'll take the power off and those are my codes. So now we can go look in the troubleshooting menu. What I did do is go on and figure out how to clear the codes. So it says you hold mode for 10 seconds. Okay said something about beeping, but this one didn't beep, and I noticed that that blinked, and we're back in a regular mode, so if I do, okay, it's nothing, I got no codes, so it says to get out of this that you just hit one of these, take it out of mode, the codes were 2214 for D1 and 2511 for D2, and the rest of them were clear. So I had two error codes. The way that it shows you in the TM is you have your main code and then your subcode. So 14, engine speed sensor reasonableness test. That, I guess, just says, hey, we're gonna test this sensor and see if it's within the range that it should be. If it's not, this code comes up and you use troubleshoot procedure task F22. I had no idea what that meant. I searched all through. You would figure that it would give you this, and then afterwards, somewhere in the TM, would be that. No, they don't make it that simple. You actually need to go back to the second booklet, 20 TAC 2, which is the PDF file before this one, to get that procedure. For example, here's one of them. I'm not going to go over these these procedures because you can get way down a rabbit hole. I went through a bunch of these procedures and actually kind of didn't need to, but I learned a lot about how this worked. 
So you got to go back to book or PDF 20 tech two if you're trying to look up whatever your troubleshooting procedure is here. I also wrote that down in here. So I went through this testing procedure and the speed sensor was fine. So instead of going down the rabbit hole of tracing everything out, I went right up to the front of the truck and tested for the ohms across the speed sensor and it was good. Mind you, again, I'm sorry, this is all kind of out of order. I had that problem. The next day when I started the truck and it dried out a little bit, it was fine and it worked. I actually went and drove the truck like 40 miles, no problem. But I want to figure out why that happened. And I suspected going into it that it was gonna be some sort of wire short somewhere and maybe one wire I needed to get fixed. If you have any of these codes, instead of going directly to this troubleshooting task, I recommend checking all your connectors because I've seen reports of people both on Steel Soldiers and Forms that they found a connector that was loose, damaged, dirty. They simply cleaned it out or replaced the connector and they were good. The problem never came back. I was not that fortunate, but what I'm going to do now is stop sitting here just talking about this stuff and I'm going to go show you on the truck all the external connections working my way from the transmission up to the front of the cab. That is the reason why the grill is off to be able to access. I'm not going to go over the connectors that are underneath the passenger kick panel because those I knew that is not where my problem was. So I didn't go there, but there are procedures for checking that and tracing it out in some of those troubleshooting tasks in the TM. Okay, one thing I'll add too before getting to showing you the connectors is the wire diagrams. It was another th thing that I found extremely confusing in the TM. After a couple hours of figuring it out, for example, if you're looking for a particular connector, you can't search the connector and have it come up on the wire diagrams. It kind of thinks this is an image. Um, these are in the depot level ones. There's the TM number 34 tech one at the end. There's a table at the beginning that works similar to map grids. So if you wanted to find, for example, connection that is like right here, P119, it'll show you, it'll say zone A, section 73. You have all your A's that run horizontal and your zones that run vertical. As you go through the pages ascending in the page number, the top zones go up. So that's kind of how you tell what zone you're in. So for example, if it tells you that it's in zone B73, you go B73, there's P119. That's the best I can explain it. Um, all this other jargon and stuff in here, but if you're trying to isolate one wire that you do find bad, this will be very helpful. All right, it's not super easy to record under here, but I'm pretty much sitting underneath the fuel tank and right now I'm looking forward. You can see where the, the cap motor is pairing up with the transmission. And that connector right there is for connection P72. It's gonna be your first one to check. These all come off the wire harness that connects up in the front of the cab. The next one to check is coming off the transfer case right here. You can see how it says clutch above it. Um, that's a twist lock type connector. That's P71. The next one that you wanna check, it's a big connector, is trace the wire all the way up on the left hand side where you see that blue, that's your external transmission uh, connector and that is P67. This one I think is probably one of the ones that can get damaged because the left hand side there coming off the harness is metal and that piece to the right through the bulkhead, that's all plastic and then it runs down and plugs into the top of the transmission and goes to all the different solenoids and stuff that are inside the transmission. The next one to go check is underneath the cab. So I'm gonna lift the cab and I'll show you where that one is. Coming up on the driver's side here. Right there, that connector. It's connector P73. This one's pretty visible and easy to get at. 
that comes down and it goes to the wire loom that's under there that's run into that big connector, the external connector over there. The other thing I check too, though it's not part of that harness, is on the bell housing there, you can see that connection's all taped up. That's another engine speed sensor. I wasn't sure if that was causing any of the issues and it was easy to check. The reason why I have it taped is normally there's like a little rubber cap or red cap similar to that one right there with the zip tie to keep the connections from coming apart. When I cut the zip tie and took it apart, it just completely fell apart. It was clean, so I put it back together and just taped it. So I don't run the chance of having another problem with that. So the next connection is the harness goes all the way up to the front of the cab. All right, cab's down. This big wire loom goes up under here and it's a twist connector right there. That's P119. This is where a lot of your troubleshooting procedures are gonna start from because this is where all your wiring in the cab comes through to go out of the cab. That has to do with all those other connections that I showed you. So this is where you're gonna be able to troubleshoot a lot of your problems. And I spent a lot of time stretching wires from the different connections to see if some of them was open going through some of the procedures and then doing some of my own stuff and I couldn't find anything that was open when it was dry. And I'm gonna splice into some of my old stuff now that I recorded over the last couple days showing what I found to be my problem and unfortunately not really being able to fix it. All right, after clearing the codes and going to drive it last night, everything's running smooth, but I still want to get to the bottom of why when it's wet, it gave me that transmission issue. Obviously, you know, one of my goals with this truck is to be able to go help the coast when hurricanes and stuff like that come or whatever. And obviously I can't do that if I go through a darn puddle or something, a wire gets wet and I can't shift out of gear. All right, I'm pretty sure I found what my problem is, even though it's not giving me a symptom anymore. Spent about two days chasing this. You're looking up here, this you can see I pulled the wires out of the wire harness and I peeled back some of the rotten insulators on two wires, okay? So I'm wondering if the water got in and was shorting those two wires out only when it was wet. And another thing I noticed is, I'm not gonna reach up and disconnect it again, but if you disconnect P67 right there and pull it down, since that bend is in there, some of the electrical tape deteriorated, and if you had water dripping from the top, it could have run down the wire harness, and then you can kind of see how there's a bend where these wires have deteriorated, the water would just kind of sit in there. I'm hoping wrapping all this stuff up really good is gonna do the trick. Okay, I undid some of the zip ties and I pulled the harness out this side so I didn't need to be underneath the truck and started tracing some stuff back. And it's way worse than I thought. I mean, this whole harness has deteriorating wire insulation on the inside of it. As you can see. And that's the original ones I pointed out and I haven't even peeled it back any farther. And in here as well, sorry, this is terrible recording. And you could just see it. I mean, they're all coming apart in there too. At least from my initial research, you can't find any of this stuff brand new anymore because these are uh, obsolete trucks. I had to pause it to get that on. Make sure if you do pull this off to do any tests, I have to get two hands up there and fully get it to lock the cam lock in place. But I uh, can't get any new. Um, I found one place, the guy at LMTV Parts, the one who's help, helped me through some of these issues. He, uh, he has like a used takeoff one, but it's pretty expensive. It's like 600 bucks. I don't know how I feel about buying a used harness without being able to like see it in hand at first. I guess I'm just gonna put things together and I'm gonna be very weary that, you know, a couple drops of water getting in the wrong place could freaking brick this truck, have it sitting still. Uh, I hate not being able to solve a problem looking into it, but that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I did try to duplicate the problem to get it to the point where it would start driving and stick into gear. Couldn't even duplicate the problem. Uh, I disconnected the speed sensor and got one of the error codes 
on the transmission controller, but it didn't cause the truck to not shift. And then I tried actually putting a little jumper across those wires that I found exposed at first. It would cause the transmission to only want to go into fifth gear like it was causing the uh, mode, four wheel drive mode to engage. But again, it would still shift and drive. So that's telling me that water could have gotten anywhere. I mean, maybe the water got in to this part of the harness and we're shorting something out here. But when it's dry, it's not giving me the problem. <clears throat> I wish I had a solution, but I don't. So what I did just to get the truck back together was pulled off as much wire loom as I could access with having it pulled out this side. Basically wrapped individual wires that were crackling with electrical tape and then wrapped all the wires together with electrical tape and then put the loom back over and use some more electrical tape and I just did my best to seal it up the best that I can. And that's all I can do for now. Uh, until I find a source for a brand new wire harness or decide that I'm going to take the time to remove the harness and completely rebuild it or if someone has a used harness for what I would consider to be a, a, a fair price for what I'm willing to spend on a used harness that could potentially have an issue in it. I'm just going to have to let it be. I'm a little bummed about that, but it is what it is. Hopefully it was helpful for, for you in this part. Um, it's kind of a loose end and there could be a huge rabbit hole of electrical problems with your transmission But hopefully this gives you some insight on what to check on what might be wrong with yours and uh, Help you get going again or minimum at least identify your problem